So I mentioned in the previous video how the final conclusion of why something tips over really comes down to is the object's center of mass to the right or to the left of the point where it's receiving its support from below. Um, and I want to extend that idea to a method of thinking about this, which allows you to kind of very quickly and very easily figure out whether something is going to tip over without having to do any calculations. And this is really handy for trying to take the material in this course and apply it to everyday life. Um, because you can actually picture what's happening right away. So if, if I, let me take my tower that I was using in the previous video. So imagine focusing on here that this tower has a certain size for its base. So that size of the base of the tower is referred to as the tower's base of support. So what you want to do is visualize this area over the base this is basically the region where this tower is stable. If the center of the tower, which is gonna be the center of this green block, if the center of the tower stays over anywhere in this base of support, the tower will be stable. So like here, focus your eye on the center of the green block here. If I tip it over like this, for instance, is the object gonna tip over or not? If you're just using kind of you know, no physics knowledge, it might be hard to tell. But if I visualize the physics here, if I go from the center of the green block pointing downward, you see how that is still within the base of support. It's still within the tower. So if I release this, it's gonna be stable and it's gonna go back to where it was. Now, on the other hand, let's say that I move it to here if you extend this point in the center of the block, notice now it's starting to get outside the base of support. If I extend it, say, to here, now it's way outside the base of support, so that for sure is going to fall. And you can also find there's one point here, see if I can predict where it is with this method. Try to help you see it a little bit better. There should be a point right about here where the center of mass of the object is right above the corner of the block where it's right on the borderline of whether it tips over or not. And this is the point, like if you lean back in your chair um, and try to find that point where you can kind of hover, um, that's what we're talking about here. Um, so you can kind of visualize right away um, where is the object space support. Now, for practical purposes, the next question is going to be, um, how do we improve upon this for kind of everyday life stuff? Um, and one way we can do so is, like when it comes to buildings or when it comes to the human body, make the base of support bigger. So say I take a big old base like this and I put that at the base of the tower. Now suddenly the tower has a huge base of support. And so this tower is gonna be extremely stable and it's gonna be almost impossible to knock this thing over. And so that's what, you know, that's what you want to do in, if you're building a building or something like this, you want to make sure it has a nice big base of support. So in order for this guy to fall over, I would have to tip it all the way so that, see, this is now the base. So I would have to tip it all the way so that that thing goes outside of the base. So you always want to visualize where is the base and then where is the center of mass and is the center of mass over the base or is the center of mass outside the base? And as soon as the center of mass goes outside the base, that's where something is gonna to start to tip over. Um, let me show you some, some photos where you can apply this to kind of sports in the human body. So these are some pictures from my notes. Um, so here's a, a few pictures I found on the internet, for instance. Like on the left side, we have this batter, and I've drawn in with the black lines where is that person's base of support based on their foot placement? Because the base of the human body is normally our feet. Um, and so how widely spaced your feet are and where they're placed, that's gonna determine where the human body's base of support is. So like this batter on the left, you can see intuitively that that person is very stable. They are at no risk of falling over. This isn't gonna be one of those cases where like they swing the bat and they end up tipping over and falling on the ground because their base of support um, is, is large 
and um, their center of mass is right over the base of support. Um, a person's center of mass is probably um, somewhere around here. Uh, so the center of mass is right over the center of the base of support, which is exactly what you want if you're going to be totally stable. On the other hand, on the left side here, you can see this person is leaning dangerously to one side. This person's center of mass is probably around here. And if we extend that downwards, it's right like on the edge of, of their foot placement. Um, and that's why intuitively you know that this person is leaning way to the side and they are either gonna fall over or they're gonna be committed to moving their feet to in one particular direction. And that oftentimes for sports is a really bad thing. Um, that's how like, for instance, um, you can juke someone in football is um, if that person starts leaning their center of mass towards one side of their base of support, then they're kind of committing to where their feet are gonna go next because their feet have to stay underneath their base of support. So if you start to move your, I mean, their feet have to stay underneath their center of mass. So if you start moving your center of mass around by leaning to one side, then you have to move your feet to match your center of mass or else you're gonna fall over. So then your two options, you know, if you start to get juked in football is, to move in the wrong direction and completely look like a fool or else fall over if you try to move in the other direction because your center of mass goes outside your base of support um, and uh, you start to have a gravitational torque that tips you over. Um, so this is why in the world of sports, um, people are obsessed a lot of times with foot placement and, and uh, with, you know, how your body is leaning and where, how you're, you're, you're kind of like, balanced and oriented because um, this kind of determines, you know, your location of your body center of mass determines where your feet can go and where your feet go determines where your center of mass can go. Um, and uh, so there's really a lot of interesting kind of sports physics in um, how people place their feet and, and how they lean their bodies. Um, I have a few other pictures here too. Like here's another one from some karate tournament or something. And, uh, you know, I know nothing about karate, but I can tell which one of these two kids is about to get flipped and knocked over. Because if you look at, again, the center of mass versus the base of support, the kid on, on um, my right side over here, get pen tool back, the kid over here, he's got this huge wide stance with the base of support perfectly underneath his center of mass. So he's extremely stable. That's why intuitively, if you think about it, you know that that kid is going to be really stable and really hard to knock down with that stance because you'd have to move his center of mass so far off to one side or else you have to knock his feet out from under him. Those are really the only two ways to knock him over because you have to either get his center of mass outside the base of support or you have to reduce his base of support. On the other hand, this other kid he basically has one foot off the ground here that's not supporting any weight. So all of his weight is on this foot, which means his base of support is just the size of that one foot. Now, right now, he's kind of okay because he's got his body's um, center of mass kind of over the edge of that foot. But you can see intuitively that if this other kid just gives him a little shove, that center of mass will go outside the base of support and he'll start to tip over and he'll probably, he's probably about to get knocked over. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, that's where the rubber hits the road in terms of um, how this physics really affects everyday life. Um, I have one more picture that I wanted to show. Yeah, here's another good one. Um, when it comes to like balancing your body, um, like this person doing this kind of crazy balance move on one foot, um, how is it that they're stable? And the answer is um, all you have to do is have your eye on where is this person's center of mass, um, where is the base of support, and look, their center of mass is right over their base of support. That's why this person is able to balance in this position. Um, and, uh, you know, you can analyze a lot of different things about the human body this way, and you can make exactly the same argument when it comes to why buildings are stable, why bridges are stable, all kinds of different things that you encounter in the world around you. Um, if you start looking 
you'll find um, the base support is, is going to be underneath that center of mass if you want uh, stability.